Up until now, we've been working with some of the more basic features of C Sharp. And in this section, we're going to start looking at some of the more advanced features of C Sharp that were added in some of the more recent versions. Now, most of the stuff that you've seen so far, you'll see in C Sharp applications all over the place. But the ones that we're going to look at now are going to enable you to write applications that are more advanced and have more concise code in them. And we're going to start off by looking at something called variable parameter lists. Variable parameter lists are useful because there's going to be times when you want to create functions that take a number of arguments that you don't know in advance. And the way that you do this is by using the params keyword. The params keyword allows you to define a parameter list for a function that takes a variable number of parameters. And it looks something like this. Suppose I have a function that added a bunch of numbers together. Now, I could add a whole bunch of numbers, but the problem is without using variable parameter lists, I'd have to have a fixed number of parameters. So, for example, I could supply two integers in this case, A and B. But what if I wanted to add three integers or four integers or some unknown number of integers? Well, I could go the route of overloading methods if you watched the movie on that section, in which case I would just define a whole bunch of add numbers functions and I'd define a version of add numbers that takes two arguments and then one that takes three arguments and then one that takes four arguments. The problem is that gets really tedious really quickly and really bloats the code. Or I could just simply use the params keyword and tell my function that it takes an array of arguments. So for example, rather than just adding two numbers, I would do something like this. Now here I've used the params keyword and following the params keyword, I say int with square brackets. So this tells the C-sharp compiler, hey, compiler, this function is going to take an array of arguments, and we don't know how long that array is going to be. So the params keyword says, just be ready for a whole bunch of arguments. Now, once I've done that, I can rewrite the body of this function from just adding two numbers to adding a whole bunch of numbers. And I would use the for each construct to loop over each one of the integers in the nums argument that you see there in the parameter list and just keep a running total. So let's jump over to the code and actually write this example and see it work. Okay, here in my variable params example, I've scrolled down to the variable parameter list sections of my example snippets. And the first thing we're going to do is copy over the function. So this is the function that's going to add a whole bunch of numbers. So I'll just copy this and go over to the program code. And I'm going to paste it in. And I'll paste it down here. So now I have my add numbers function, and you can see I'm using the params keyword that takes an integer array of arguments. So let's exercise this. Let's go back up to the code. And I'm going to copy over this code here, which I'm going to paste in the main function. Okay, so let's paste this in. So let's take a look at what's happening here. First, you'll notice that we have two different calls to add numbers. There's one here on line 14. There's one here on line 17. The one on line 14 is passing in three arguments, four, six, and eight. And then the one here on 17 is passing in a whole bunch of arguments. So what's going to happen is each one of these calls to the add numbers function is going to generate an array of integers. And then inside my add numbers, I'm just going to loop over each one of the integers, add it to my running total, and then return the total back to the caller, which will be stored in this result variable right here. So let's just build this and run it. And you can see that in the first case, the result is 18. And in the second case, the result is 84. So I've been able to now define a function that takes a variable number of parameters so that I can write my code using this function and not know how many arguments I'm going to have in advance. Now, there's a couple of things you need to keep in mind about the parameters function. One of the most important ones is that if you're going to use the params keyword, that has to be the last argument to the function. What I can't do is something like this. You'll see that when I try to do that, I get some errors. And if I mouse over it, you'll see a parameter array must be the last parameter in a formal parameter list. The reason for this is because since this is variable, the compiler has no way of knowing how many arguments are in the array and therefore which argument goes in the array and which integer is the last one. So if I wanted to do something like this, I'd have to make sure that any other arguments, whether they be strings, or integers, or objects. All of those have to come before the params array. So now we see that there's no error. Well, there's an error up here because I'm not passing in the string integer object. But anyway, that's how you use variable parameters in your functions.
So using the params keyword, you can define functions that take a variable number of parameters, which greatly simplifies code that has to work on an unknown number of arguments.